Hi guys, um, I welcome you to this lecture on institutional factors in real estate development in Ghana. In this lecture, I'll look at four main things. I'll look at the threefold framework for land use decision making. I'll look at land use planning laws in Ghana. I'll look at zoning regulation and standards in Ghana. And then the last topic would be development and building permitting in Ghana. So somewhere in the 80s, indeed the earlier or the first version of a book uh, was published in 19, in the 1970s. And Balo um, proposed what he called the threefold framework for land use decision making. Uh, in essence, what he was saying was that every land use must satisfy this threefold framework. So the very first component of this framework is what he referred to as the physical and biological uh, possibility, capability, or practicality, or practicability of the use to which uh, we want to put the land to. The second component was the assessment of the e economic and the technological feasibility of the use to which we want to put the land to. And then the last component of the threefold framework is the institutional acceptability of the land use or the use to which we want to put the land use to. And here we would like to define institutions as humanly devised rules that shape human behavior. Okay, so uh, some people would say that institutions are what we refer to as the rules of the game. Okay, so by institutions, there are many types we can consider. We can have legal institutions, such as uh, institutions that may come from the constitution, the statute laws of the country, ordinances, and then of course, public regulation. We can have political institutions, and uh, we can have economic institutions as well. Uh, all of these uh, institutions will classify as formal institutions. And then of course, there are informal institutions like culture. So the belief systems, the norms, um, the social morals of a group of people would all be classified as institutions. In the context of real estate development, we'll look at institutions uh, in relation to planning institutions, okay? And this is what this lecture is about. So um, we will focus on the institutional acceptability of the real estate development process and the real estate development output that will be generated. Some important definitions for us. The first one is land use. And here we define land use as the purpose for which an area of land is used for humans. Example, crop land, urban settlement, forest, etc. Spatial planning. It is the locational dimensions of development in a territorial space and offers an opportunity to achieve a spatially integrated and orderly development of social sorry, orderly development of human settlements. And then land use planning, which we'll define as the delineation and ordering of land for different purposes and with the aim of ensuring efficient and optimal utilization of land and land resources. So in Ghana, the legal basis for land use planning can be found in at least five main uh, legal documents. Uh, the first one is the 1992 constitution and precisely article 267, uh, clause three on the disposition of land touches on how or what land can be used for. The Lands Commission Act of 2008, act seven also touches on land use planning in Ghana. And then the Land Use and Spatial Planning Act 
2016, Act 295, uh, is the main um, statute, uh, substantive law that deals with uh, issues of uh, land use planning in Ghana. And then we have the Local Governance Act 2016, Act 936, also touching on who uh, has the mandate to undertake land use planning in Ghana. And then the last one, but not the least, is the Lands Act of 2020, which consolidates all the land laws of Ghana, and for that matter, provides some basis uh, for land use planning in Ghana. Now, it's important we look at what the spatial planning system of Ghana is. Now, any real estate development project has spatial impacts, okay, and that impact or that project must fit into the spatial planning system of Ghana. Now in Ghana, there are three, or there's a three-tier um, spatial planning system. We have what we call the spatial development uh, framework, which contains statements of principles about land use or what um, um, land should be used for. And this uh, actually is translated at three main levels. We have the national spatial development framework, the regional spatial development framework, and the district spatial development framework. And then under the spatial development frameworks, um, especially under the district level, we have what you call the structure plans. The structure plans, in other words, are the master plans uh, that determine uh, what uh, land uses uh, exist in a particular area or what land has been zoned for or has been planned for in a particular district. The structure plans are actually broad level plans, okay, and they are what we refer to as they are indicative plans. They indicate, they are not very specific, unlike the local plans, which are very detailed. They, 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 they give you the specific details of uh, what kind of land use or what kind of use or activity a particular piece of land can be used for in an area. So these are examples of um, the spatial development framework and the, stru the structure plan. And uh, these are usually um, color coded. So as, as, as you can see, um, the spatial development framework is broad than the structure plan. And the structure plan is also broader than the uh, local plan. And as you can see, the local plan determines the fiscal development within an area, and it provides you with um, the very details. In fact, um, the, 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 a very detailed um, use of, of land in an area. Now, let's consider zoning regulations and planning standards. The basis for zoning regulations and planning standards in Ghana can be found in the Land Use and Spatial Planning Act 2016, Act 925, Section 84 to 102. And then the zoning guidelines and planning standards of 2001 by the Town and Country Planning Act. What this means is that for any development activity to be accepted, they must conform to uh, the specifications provided in the zoning regulations and the planning standards guidelines. So what is zoning or what are zoning regulations and guidelines? So we will define zoning as the process of creating zones, which is also defined as an area whose boundaries can be accurately georeferenced within 20 meters. So the zones are defined in the structure plan and determine the type of development that will be detailed at broad level in a local plan. Uh, to ensure that local land use activities are cited in areas with best 
or which best suit their functions and also mitigate the adverse impacts associated with noise, traffic, safety of operation and amenities such as electricity, water and drainage system. All lands within a planning scheme area shall be zoned. So the plans for an area are subject to approval by the local planning authority, which is the district assembly. So once the plans has been approved by the assembly, it becomes a legally binding document. Okay, so fundamentally a zone or zoning um, basically determines in broad terms what um, a particular piece of land can be used for. Okay. Now, a standardized system of color coding is used for all the um, legally binding types of plants. Okay, so the structure plan uses a simplified range of color codes as the zoning relates to areas of land that contain multiple parcels of land, while the local plan specifies the intended use of all parcels within the local or the plan area. The zoning at the structure plan level is less prescriptive than at the local plan level. And, and that is one way to differentiate the structure plan from the local plan. The structure plan is indicative, it is broad. Okay, so it can tell you that, um, let's say this hectare of land should be used for residential land use. But it doesn't tell you what type of residential uses should be put there. And there are different types of residential uses, say the building of apartments, bungalows, um, uh, that's, I mean, skyscrapers, um, uh, flats, or whatever. It doesn't do that. That detailed description is provided in the local plan. So for example, in terms of color coding, you can see that um, there are many of them here. Look at this. This is um, the structure plan um, of the Greater Kumase Conurbation. And all the colors here represent something. Okay. Uh, let's look at some of them in detail. So uh, when you look at uh, the green or the area shaded green, uh, the deep green, uh, represents a Greek land use. Uh, the blue areas uh, represents commercial. The yellow areas represent educational. And then um, you have this orange area representing commercial offices and then residential combined. Yeah, and so anytime you see a structure plan, this gives you an idea of what um, uh, the land in that area can be used for. And so as a developer, um, one of the things you would want to do is to ensure that whatever uh, project you have uh, fits into uh, these zones, okay? And so if, you, if, if it happens that the land you want to develop, um, let's say into a residential land use, is actually in a commercial zone, then there might be a need for uh, you to rethink your project or there might be a need for you to apply for a rezoning of that land use, okay? And, and usually this would be important when the use you want to put the land to conflict with the existing land use. Let me give you an example. So in a commercial area, uh, usually it would not be allowed for um, a company to build a bit heavy uh, factory there, which will emit fumes during the production of booze uh, in that factory, okay? Or during the, uh, the process where uh, value is added to uh, the goods, okay? And that is because the fumes uh, would have an adverse effect on the residents in the area, okay? And so for that purpose, uh, whatever use you want to put it to uh, must fit into the, zone, the zoning um, of that area. Now let's look at the development permitting process. So um, as part of the real estate development process, it is important that the developer applies for development permit, okay? And the process is determined by the legal framework of the country, okay? And, and uh, there are certain requirements 
that should be met before uh, a, a permit or a permission will be granted for uh, the project to be developed. Okay, so now what is development permitting? And we'll define that as a statutory mandate of the MMDA. So MMDAs here represents the ministries, uh, municipal, metropolis, um, or municipalities, uh, and then the district assemblies. And uh, in essence, uh, development permitting is meant to ensure uh, development control. And by development control, we mean orderliness, safety, uh, good health, convenience, and the beauty of uh, the space within their jurisdiction. Uh, development permitting, uh, then again, is conducted by different units under the district assemblies. So for example, um, you know, it's the case that the works department in the district assemblies are responsible for ensuring the structural integrity of the project you want to put up. And the physical planning department is responsible for ensuring uh, that the zoning of the area is complied with. So for example, if, the, if, if, an, if an area is zoned for residential use, it is the responsibility of the fiscal planning department to ensure that uh, whatever all the land parcels within that zone are used for residential use. Then again, there's uh, the legal framework for development permitting. And here you find this uh, in Act 925, that's the Land Use and Spatial Planning Act, and specifically Section 103, 105, 117, uh, sorry, Section 113, 115, 117, 118, and 119, okay, uh, provides guidelines for development permitting in Ghana. And then the Local Governance Act 936, precisely section 90 to 107 um, also touches on development permitting in Ghana. And then the National Building Regulation of 1996, Legislative Instrument 1630, which is currently under review, um, also provides regulations um, in terms of how development uh, should take place within um, um, uh, um, Ghana uh, should be. And here, the specific regulations are regulations two, three, four, and five. Now, the land use and spatial uh, planning regulations, um, LI, which is the, it's the legislative instrument which uh, supports the land use and spatial planning act, also provides uh, some framework for development permitting in Ghana, and precisely uh, section 43 on, um, in fact, regulation 43 rather, on the authority for issuance of permit um, is relevant. Um, regulation 44 and 45 uh, are also very important in this regard. And so any developer must ensure that he has read these sections to um, make sure that he designs a project that conforms to um, the development permit or a project that is likely to obtain development permit. In terms of the authority for the issuance of development permitting, uh, it is a case that the development, the district planning authority is the sole authority for the issuance of permit for development. The district planning authority. Okay, and all physical developments shall require a planning permit or development permit in accordance with the land use and spatial planning regulations. Now, um, and here we will define physical development. I mean, what, 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 what comes to mind immediately is that what is physical development? Um, what do we mean by physical development? And we we'll define physical development as, or to mean the carrying out of building, engineering, mining, or other operations on, in, under, or over land, or the material change in the existing use of land, or building comprising, among others, the subdivision of land, 
the disposal of waste on land, including the discharge of effluent into a body of still or running water and the erection of an advertisement or other hoarding among others. All of these will be classified as fiscal development, which will require planning permit. So um, if you are building a house, an office, a hostel, um, a shop, all of these uh, will fall or will require um, some form of development plan, uh, permit or planning permit. Now, there are two elements of the development permit we need to take note of. And this is specified by uh, regulations 45 of the um, LI 2384. Development permits have two components, which are planning permission and building permission, okay? So physical development that require um, development permit shall include the following. So we'll see the erection of any building or structure, except those exempted by law, the making of structural alterations or transformation or a renovation to a building, execution of works or installation of um, any fitting in a building, the civil and engineering works, hoarding of a property, regularization of existing structures and redevelopment of um, existing structures. All of these will require a uh, development permit and precisely they will require planning permission and building permission. So let's look at what a planning permit is. And we'll say that the planning permit is a written permit um, issued for the purpose of fostering compliance of activities with um, approved zoning regulations in the nature of land use, heights, orientation, building lines and setbacks, and plot coverage. And two, planning standards in the nature of geographical accessibility, size, and class of development. The planning permit um, also requires that fiscal developments that uh, may require planning permit will include the following. So you may have temporary structures uh, will require planning permit, temporary activities that require the use of um, public space, uh, demolition works, advertisement, change of use, consolidation, subdivision, hoarding, um, mining in any nature, sun winning, quarrying, and mineral extraction, all will require planning permit and the disposal of industrial waste or chemical waste on land, excavation, change in color schemes and um, tree removal, all will require uh, planning permit. And, 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 and the last one in particular is, is very important because of issues of sustainability. So uh, before a real estate project is undertaken, usually um, the developers would have to clear the existing land. And clearing the land, trees may be removed Okay, um, there's a requirement that the developer obtains planning permission before he cuts down any tree. Now, these are some of the requirements for development permitting. So development permit application shall be accompanied with four sets of each of the following. So a site plan to the scale of one is to 25, at 2,500 and conforming to the local plan of the area will be required. A block plan to the scale of one is to 100 or one is to 200, depending on the scale of the development will also be required. Architectural drawings to the scale of one is to 20 or one is to 40 will be required. Structural drawings to the scale of one is to 20 or one is to 40 will also be required. Uh, you also require evidence of a right or authorization to use the land in accordance with the laws of Ghana. You, um, a report on stakeholder consultation where applicable would also be required. And um, such report uh, will relate, uh, and of course, where applicable reports relating to air or aviation safety, radiation protection, environmental protection, fire safety, petroleum operations, 
standard verification, traffic impact, the technical impact, hydrological impact, and structural impacts will all be required depending on the scale of the project. So a very big project uh, like the Kumasi Mall uh, may require um, many of these reports, okay? And in terms of the pre-application process, uh, it is the law in Ghana that the district planning authority uh, will through appropriate medium make available the procedure, the requirement and the general information for securing a planning permit and a development permit. So um, the law mandates the district planning authority to specify the procedures and the requirements for obtaining planning permits. Uh, preferably it should be made available online or I mean at specific locations so for easy access uh, so that people will not be constrained unnecessarily. So and the information that should be contained in that communique uh, should include one application forms, guidelines for completing those forms, uh, the full checklist of documents required for various categories of development, uh, the schedule of fees, the duration for acquiring permits, uh, the designated office for submission, and then contact for further inquiries. Now, the Secretariat for Spatial Planning Committee um, is actually specified in Act 925, precisely Section 37, Subsection 2, and 38 subsection 2, uh, paragraph A, indicates that the head of the fiscal planning department of the district shall be the secretary um, of the spatial planning committee. You get it. So um, the, the, the fiscal development unit or department, which is headed by the uh, fiscal planning um, uh, officer, would actually be the secretary for this committee. And section 42 uh, requires that the fiscal planning department of the district shall serve as the secretary of the uh, district spatial planning committee. Okay, and then the head of the uh, fiscal planning department of the district assembly shall be the head of the secretariat. Yeah, so the permit process will require that one, you submit an application there will be a vetting process, then, then there will be a site inspection. There will be technical considerations by the technical committee. Uh, there will be consideration by the spatial planning committee, which will require one, um, it, in which case an approval will be given, a deferment will be given or a refusal of approval to, uh, would also be given. Uh, there will be processing for issuance processing for issuance of permit, uh, which will require or will include a notification of the applicant of the decision of the spatial planning committee. And then there'll be collection of the, 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 the permit after uh, that point. Um, and then wherever, when, and when there are queries, uh, those queries would also uh, be followed up on. And then if there's a need for an appeal then there's a process for you to follow. There are some exemptions from the submission of plans. And so a public entity shall comply with the permit procedure for planning and development permitting, except otherwise exempted under Act 925 or LI 2384. And the authority shall issue uh, planning standards for entities that may be exempted from specified parts of the permitting process. So exempted entities include a diplomatic mission and a military and uh, security installation system. Um, exemption shall not cover non-security aspects. Okay, so um, Exempted institutions shall be required to deposit the following with the assembly. Uh, the basic drawings of plans as prescribed by the authority, indicative sketch, 
will be a block plan, elevations, traffic impact assessment, and any basic requirements that the assembly considers appropriate. Now, there are a group of uh, institutions or entities called statutory undertakers who also perform development activities. Uh, they are usually legally mandated uh, public institutions, such as the Ghana Airports Company Limited, the Ghana Highways Authority, the Department of Urban Roads, the Department of FIDA Roads, the Water Resources Commission, Minerals Commission, Environmental Protection Agency, the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, universities, and other relevant institutions. Uh, for them, it is the case that the authority um, shall issue guidelines regarding application procedures for statutory uh, undertakers and for special development entries such as these. In terms of compliance uh, to planning regulations and standards, you have sections 115, 117, 118, 119 of Act 925 and sections 94 um, to 97 of Act 936 uh, providing a number of enforcement measures. So for example, a person who undertakes a development without a permit uh, is deemed to have committed an offense. A district assembly may then issue an enforcement notice demanding the immediate stoppage of the execution uh, development, the execution of the development or works contrary to an approved plan. And a district assembly may, for the purpose of enforcement, prohibit, abate, remove, or pull down or alter a fiscal development which does not conform to an approved plan, or where that action is needed to ensure conformity with approved plans, or to prohibit the use of land or building for or in a manner contrary to planning provision. Okay. And where a development does not comply with the permit or permit condition, the planning authority may revoke the permit or impose additional conditions. This may be subject to the payment of penalties as well. So this brings us to the end of this lecture on the institutional factors that uh, real estate developers must consider um, in their development projects in Ghana. Thank you.